The king's eyes suddenly sparkled, and his lips formed a predatory smile. No, he will not give such a woman to his son. The heir will find an easier bride. Philip VI, King of France, was astonished. He gazed intently from head to toe at his potential daughter-in-law, Blanche of Navarre, who was to marry his eldest son from his first marriage, the future King John II Good. Blanche stood majestically surrounded by ladies of the court. Her silk blue gown encased her marvelous figure. The velvet weave, embellished with gold threads, shone even brighter under the dancing candle flames. The princess's wheat-colored hair cascaded down her shoulders. She was not just a woman, but the embodiment of royal luxury and beauty. There was something unusual about her young face. Slightly childlike features were surprisingly matched with her wise and piercing eyes. Blanche of Navarre was born in 1331 or 1333. Her father was Philip III d'Evreux and Jean of France. Her maternal grandfather was King Louis X of France. If not for Salis Law in France, Jean, his only child, would have taken the throne of France. In addition to this, Jean was considered by some to be illegitimate, as her mother was once convicted of adultery and exiled to a convent. Interestingly enough, Jean's uncle Philip V ascended to the throne. He promised to make his niece his heiress, even though she was a woman. There was only one condition, he would make her his heiress if no sons were born to him. Indeed, fate did not reward the king with sons, and after Philip's death, the throne was taken over by his younger brother. Charles died having made a similar pact with Jean. He too had no sons. But instead of the throne of France, Jean and her husband Philip got the throne of Navarre. Jean was forced to renounce for herself and her offspring, her claim to the French crown. For this reason, given her mother's rich lineage and membership of the Capeting dynasty, Blanche of Navarre knew her worth. She was convinced that her mother and herself were more deserving of the throne of France by blood right than Philip VI. Of course, dynastic matters were indeed complicated. Philip VI was not a descendant of the kings of Navarre. He was an ancestor of the Valois dynasty. The nobles of Navarre were against his rule, giving their vote to Jean. But who would have thought that Philip would fall in love with the daughter of his rival? His first wife, Jean of France, was nicknamed Limpy. She was not beautiful, devoid of grace and charisma. Nevertheless, the marriage produced nine children. In 1348, at the age of 55, she died of the plague. Philip did not give much thought to a second marriage. His eldest son, the future John II, was more in need of a wife. He was already almost 30 years old, and for the Middle Ages to be single at that age was considered rare. The royal family's choice fell almost immediately on Blanche of Navarre. She was young, about 16 or 18 years old, and had an enviable pedigree. John liked his bride, but he had no idea that his father liked her more. The age difference between Philip VI and Blanche of Navarre was nearly 40 years. But this did not prevent the French king to make her a marriage proposal, and Blanca agreed to the monarch's proposal. In early January 1350, a lavish wedding took place. At the time of the marriage, Philip was 56 years old. The king was happy to hold Blanche of Navarre in his arms, forgetting about the huge difference in age. Next to Blanche of Navarre, the king felt young again. Soon she became pregnant. Unfortunately, Philip was not known for his good health. August 23, 1350 he died, leaving a young and pregnant widow moreover, officially uncrowned. The court froze in anticipation, who will give birth to the Queen Dowager. After all, if it was a boy, Blanche could well become regent. However, the Queen Dowager gave birth to a girl named after her grandmother Jean. Blanche was considered the most beautiful princess and queen of her time. She was nicknamed Beautiful Wisdom for her love of books and reading. The young widow might well have tried her luck with another man. She retired to Neufle St. Martin near Geysers and refused a second marriage to Alphonse of Castile, declaring queens of France do not remarry. Blanche of Navarre was a respected woman in France, even during her widowhood. She occasionally appeared at court, showered with all sorts of honors. Like any widowed queen in the Middle Ages, she inherited considerable privileges, property, and lands. She retained the respect of John the Good. 
and had her father not stolen his bride from his son, Blanche might have been happier married to John II. Blanche lived another half century. She did not die until 1398 at about the age of 67. She spent her life in chastity, protecting widows, orphans, and the poor. Her palace was said to be more like a religious convent. In 1885, Leopold de Lisle published a book in Paris that described Blanche of Navarre's enormous will and her funeral requirements. Several dozen pages similarly recounted the Queen's wishes. She gave many valuable instructions regarding her bequest for art, costumes, and furnishings, but mostly for books. The Queen did own a remarkable library and volumes that she shared with her parents, friends, and servants. She has the right to rank among the first princesses of the Middle Ages who loved books. Blanche bequeathed to her executors to pay in full all her debts, if any at the time of her death. Blanche also wrote, Our body is to be buried in its entirety in the church of the Abbey of St. Denis in France, in the chapel of Monsignor St. Hippolyte, which we founded, where we buried the body of Jeanne of France, our daughter. I do not want our bodies and our daughters to be separated. Blanche of Navarre wanted to be buried in a purple robe and a golden robe, writing we like this. I want to be buried luxuriously with a sense of pride and vanity. She even detailed what the light should be during her funeral. Blanche's wishes were fulfilled, but her remains were desecrated in the 18th century during the revolution. Blanche of Navarre was a wise, kind, and honest queen who knew her own worth. It is a pity that she did not know a long family happiness and lost her daughter early.